that, I would say uh, that we begin. And um, let me first say uh, welcome on behalf of CUSP Cambodia. I will be very brief so that we can uh, quickly go um, uh, to the meat of this uh, information event, uh, which are our scholarships, uh, which is what you'll mostly be primarily be interested in. Uh, my name is Maurizio Pacello. I'm program manager from CAS Cambodia. Uh, just some house rules. Please keep your microphone muted for the duration of the presentations. Um, if you have questions, um, there will be a, a breakout session in the latter half of this program where we have allotted 30 minutes uh, for you to go into groups with our experts and to ask every question uh, you may have about our scholarship uh, programs. Uh, with that said, I will now hand over to Dr. Peter Hefele, uh, the head of office uh, at um, Team Asia Pacific at CAS headquarters. Dr. Hefele, the floor is yours. Yeah, dear Mr. Bacello, thank you very much for your kind words of introduction. Dear Mrs. Weininger, dear Mr. Lenchevsky, dear Amos, dear students, good afternoon and a very warm welcome from Berlin to our two days information event on the Adenauer Foundation on its international scholarships. My name is Peter Hefeler, I'm the current director of the Asia Pacific Department here in Berlin. We are very surprised, delighted, and even overwhelmed by your interest in our foundation's work, and in particular, in the International Scholarships Program of our foundation. But I think this should not have kept us by surprise. I have worked in and with Asia for more than 15 years, and I'd always been fascinating by the impressive development and aspirations of young people in Southeast Asia. And that makes me very optimistic uh, about our, your future and the chances for development. I'm well aware there are a lot of obstacles laying ahead, but I believe in the strong will of you, the young generation in Southeast Asia, and in particular in your country, in your motivation, in your endurance and enthusiasm, to overcome them. And I do further believe and strongly believe that Europe and Germany can play an important role in this development. We now consider from a German and European perspective, Southeast Asia more and more as a region and a partner of major strategic importance. And that's where we see our role as a political foundation, as Konrad Adenauer Stiftung, as a partner and a bridge builder between nations and society. And this is where we see our uh, foundation, not only now, but for most of the last 50 years, we had been acting in the region, 50 years of experience in international corporations in Asia. We opened our first offices in the Philippines and in India in the 1960s. And now we are present in almost all of the ASEAN countries. And there's another 80 offices around the globe. In your country, in your home country, we opened our first representative office in 1994. And since then, we supported the transformation of your society, of your country. And with our local partners, and we have many of them, we work in a variety of fields from media, communication to rural development, from rule, law, rule of law to a regional security policy. And scholarships are one, but by far not the only instrument. In our toolbox, it's conferences, it's training programs, it's studies, many other ways and means to support, in particular, young people. My dear colleague, Mr. Linczewski, will soon introduce into the scholarship program of KES in more detail. I would like, for my part, take the opportunity and like to draw your attention to those many other activities which we run in Cambodia and in the region. Please contact my dear colleagues Isabella Weininger and Maurizio Pacello and our dear colleagues in the office in Phnom Penh for further donation. There's a lot of interesting things we are out. Well, many helping hands had made this event possible and I would like indeed to particularly thank my dear colleagues uh, Lee and Dutch in the Phnom Penh office. They did a great job. They are your partners in the office among others. I will stay with you later for the breakout sessions to answer further questions. And I hope there are a lot of questions out there. For the moment, I wish us a fruitful meeting and many questions. Thank you very much. 
Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Hefele, for those uh, kind introductory remarks. And without further ado, I will uh, hand over to Mr. Stas Lichewski of the KAS uh, Scholarship Program in Berlin. Hey, um, thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Hefele, um, for your opening remarks. And um, thank you, Mr. Patillo, for the um, invitation. Um, I'm happy to um, be here with you today. Uh, my name is uh, Stanislav Linczewski, as was already said, and I work for the Department for International um, Scholarship um, in the Konrad Adenauer Stiftung uh, in Berlin. As you will learn today, we have um, different ways of uh, giving scholarship to um, new talented um, students around the world. Uh, my department is just one of them. And in the next two minutes, I will shortly try to give you an overview of what we do and how do we give scholarships and what are our criteria. And of course, later words, we can also um, discuss it further and I'm happy to answer your questions. So um, just shortly about me, I'm currently the program officer um, for scholars from the Middle East and Africa. Um, nevertheless, our criteria are um, similar also for young students from, um, from Asia. So everything I say here today is um, relevant for any nationality. So um, our scholarship program is um, quite big and quite unique. Um, since 50 years, we've been giving scholars for international students um, to come to Germany and, and study here. And um, just for you to understand the context, we sit within a bigger department in the um, Adenauer Foundation in Berlin, which gives also scholarship for um, German um, students. We have around 300 scholarship holders at the moment coming from 65 countries. And uh, we are only about 10% of the whole department for scholarship, just for you to understand the proportion. So it's really a, a big program. Um, I will just go um, really straightforward to the, um, well, who do we look for and what are our criteria? So we look for um, scholars and students from any possible um, study program. It means we support really everything from um, architecture to agriculture. We have really diverse um, a group of scholars um, that really research everything um, possible with a few exceptions. Maybe we can talk about it later. Um, we support master and PhD um, students um, that, um, and that's an important criteria, um, come to Germany for at least four semesters to do their research or study here. So for example, no shorter master programs, right? Uh, that might be relevant some, for some of you. Uh, we do support study programs also in English. It means you can come to Germany and however study in English. Um, however, um, speaking um, and having a good uh, level of German is a central criteria for our program. So I need to stress it out at this point. Um, we expect uh, a good level of German, uh, meaning B2 level at least, uh, while already um, receiving the scholarship. Um, the reason for that, and we can talk about it later, this, that we hope to integrate you within our university groups, within our seminar program um, in Germany, and all these things um, take place um, in German. So Germany, uh, German is really necessary um, for our program. Um, but of course, we have also um, other important criteria. Um, first of all, as I said, uh, we start with master. That means you already, uh, you already must have a university degree, an undergraduate uh, degree uh, when applying to the program and you have to uh, already proven uh, above average academic um, performance, um, uh, meaning um, good notes in your um, bachelor um, studies. Um, otherwise, uh, a very central criteria for us is um, being actively engaged in voluntary work. Um, we do not uh, prescribe what you should have been doing or what you will be doing in Germany, but we do expect you to be um, active uh, in the society and to give back also something to the society where you at. Um, it means also during your studies um, in Germany. Um, we do understand, of course, that your studies and your career is your first priority. And this is also our first priority that you will um, finish and um, go forward to succeed in your life. But we also want um, students that are um, actively engaged in the community and the society that really do something good. And for that, um, there are many um, really awesome opportunities also in Germany to do um, very different things. And of course, since we are a political foundation, we of course also expect you to pro, uh, possess a broad a general education and of course interest in politic uh, in political issues. And uh, last but not least, of course, have a positive attitude 
towards the values of the uh, foundation, um, especially to, of course, towards democracy and human rights, which we also um, aim to support with our program um, around the world. Um, yes, so these are the main um, criteria. Um, what can you get with the, um, with the scholarship? So we give a scholarship of um, 860 euros for master students for two years uh, in Germany and a scholarship for PhD students of 1,200 euros um, for three years with also um, additional subsidies that we can give. And of course, as I said, we also have a very broad uh, activity program uh, with about 150 seminars per year um, with uh, university groups that also uh, engage um, in different activities uh, in your uh, city where you live and study. And we have the network of international um, scholars uh, um, that are also organizing activities on their own for international um, scholars of CAS in Germany and also um, support them. Um, well, of course, one of the main questions for you, but that's probably interesting. Well, how do I apply? I find it interesting. Um, how do I apply? So um, here it gets a bit complicated. We basically have two ways of applying for the scholarship. I'm going to put also um, in the chat here our website where you also can find all the information necessary for you. Um, one way is our um, inland uh, selection process, meaning um, for students that are already in Germany or about to come to Germany to, um, to study, meaning they already know they're going to start um, next winter semester, for example. Um, for that, we have our um, online portal, and there you just apply through this online portal. Um, each year, the deadline is the 15th of uh, July um, for the next academic year, meaning if you know that you're going to study next year in Germany, then um, you should apply by July 15th uh, in this portal. And there we conduct the interviews in Germany, um, usually in the autumn of, the, um, of this year, meaning um, around October, November. And then you get uh, usually an answer um, in winter uh, of the same year. The second process that we have, uh, which is um, also quite unique um, in comparison to other political foundations, is that we go abroad and there we um, look for um, new scholars in specific countries and regions around the world. So we do around four um, kind of these selection processes uh, in cooperation with our offices abroad um, a year. Um, of course, when there's no corona this year, of, of course, we had to do everything um, digitally. Um, nevertheless, um, it's a different process, meaning in this process, our offices abroad are much more involved in uh, recruiting and promoting our program and finding new um, scholarship holders. So um, just to give you a, a taste this year, our focus was uh, Russia, Ukraine, um, Turkey, and Latin America. And um, next year, um, it is very likely that we'll also go to um, Southeast Asia. I mean, it's not um, exactly clear which, 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 which office uh, we would work at the moment, but uh, to learn about more this selection process, um, you can just um, stay in touch with the office um, in, in Cambodia and, um, and follow the announcement um, that will be made uh, in 2022. So I think um, more or less that's the, uh, the overview, overview I wanted to, uh, to give you. Um, as I said, um, I will pub publish now the um, link to our website and I'm happy to answer your uh, questions later. So thank you very much once again. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Lenchevsky, for this very crisp but clear uh, introduction in your, to your scholarship program. I will now uh, I give the floor to Mr. Amos R. Helms. Uh, he represents uh, this, uh, the second way uh, you can make your dream to go to Germany to study come true. Amos, please. Thank, uh, thank you, Mauricio, for the uh, introduction. Um, uh, can you hear me? Because I get... Uh... Okay. Um, yes, my name is Amos Helms. Um, I have to look in the camera because uh, my camera is up there, but my screen is down. So don't be confused if I don't look straight to the camera. Um, I am very grateful that Stas uh, already made a very 
a whole introduction into our scholarship program since the differences for you uh, in terms of what we expect from you and uh, what are the conditions are very much similar to uh, to the one uh, Stas um, just introduced or explained to you. Um, I will probably focus on the major differences. The major difference between uh, our department and the department of um, Stas and Chesky is that um, we also uh, want you to learn German, of course, but um, we do not expect it as a criteria uh, in order to you to be accepted to the scholarship program, meaning uh, we offer students who are not um, uh, capable of the German language to choose an English spoken uh, course or, or seminar program in Germany, and um, they can apply uh, without uh, uh, any knowledge of German um, uh, upfront. Uh, although we support and uh, recommend highly to, to take the chance and to learn German language as much as possible, because the, um, opp the opportunities to get you connected and to um, uh, add you to our network are much higher if you are capable of German language um, in terms of uh, exchange or participation participations of uh, German spoken programs here in Germany and so on and so forth. Um, the other major difference is um, that the application will be through, um, solely run through our offices um, in your um, countries. Meaning if you want to apply for a scholarship program, you first turn to the uh, office in your case in Cambodia and um, ask about how to apply and they will hand you out all the information sheets you need to know and uh, will um, accompany you through the process of um, um, filling out the application the proper way and only if and they are the one who decide about whether um, you should um, yeah, be considered as a scholarship holder or not and then the documentation will be handed over to me and then I run the process within the headquarters again for the final approval. Uh, so this is probably one of the major differences between our program and the one of uh, Stas uh, has explained for his department. Um, last but not least, the um, difference also is that um, we can consider in certain cases a short time planning uh, in case that you are urged to, let's say if you're now thinking of uh, applying for a scholarship program and you have already have a, a green light from your German university to start uh, in this winter semester. Uh, so we will try our best to make it happen uh, in case everything is uh, proper and the application is acceptable for us uh, to support you with the scholarship uh, uh, approval in time that you can start your study program in this winter semester. As far as Stas, please correct me if I'm wrong, this uh, takes a bit more time um, in the other department uh, to process all the applications, um, which lies in the nature of the, um, of the way how they have to handle. They have much higher numbers than we do to handle uh, all the applications they get from all over the world. So uh, these are the major difference. One is you don't need exactly know German before you apply. And the second one is, you don't, um, you even can hope for a shorter uh, time of uh, application process in order to get approval for a scholarship. Um, that's so far the, the major difference for you to know. Um, all the rest about the conditions are exactly the same. You will get the same amount of money um, when you're a master student or a PhD student. Um, we also try to get you involved in, in CAS programs here in Germany. Um, but again, there we have the problem if you are, uh, if you know German, the chances to get you involved in different programs are much better than if you're only uh, able to talk in English. So um, again, we also support um, you to study German as much as possible. We help you to finance uh, language programs uh, upfront before you um, start the, your, your program here in Germany to study German as much as possible. That's probably something else, but this is also offered by, by uh, Stas Lichensky's um, department as far as I remember. That's so far from my side. Um, I think the rest we can discuss later on when we have the, the breakout sessions. Um, any questions so far, or I probably give back the word to, uh, to Maurizio. Thank you.
Thank you, Amos. Um, since you have been even crisper uh, than uh, Stas Limchevsky already, um, can I quickly ask you if you uh, would like to say one or two sentences about the fellowship program from your department? Uh, we also offer a fellowship program for um, students who already have um, achieved a certain level of academic education, meaning uh, postdoc programs, um, professors, um, people who uh, are advanced in their in their um, academic career already and would like to come um, for a research stay or um, for a teaching uh, session to Germany and uh, want to get uh, the support of Adenauer Foundation. And in this case, it's so-called fellowship program um, aims at people uh, to get these professors or doctors to to get as much as possible involved with Adenauer Foundation, meaning the, um, um, the, the they are well, accompanied mainly by the Asia team, uh, which is run by Dr. Peter Hefler, and they are um, discussing upfront with the applicant about uh, what are the content, uh, what are the contents of the stay, um, what are the focus should be on, and um, the, if they agree on, on what they want to do together, then we from our department, from my department, can offer um, a so-called fel so fellowship program. So um, I don't know if one of the interests of this group uh, already <laughs> has plans for a future fellowship program, but uh, this would then become interesting for you after probably you you have you used or have your first scholarship and uh, studied here in Germany uh, finishing an MA or a PhD program. Um, but uh, also this we can discuss more in detail uh, later in the breakout sessions. Thank you very much, Amos. And with that, I would like to return from uh, Hedy, Germany, uh, back to uh, our Cambodia. Uh, and now um, my colleague Kedi will uh, tell us a bit about our opportunities if you wish to stay in Cambodia for the time being to follow your studies here. Kedi. Thank you very much, Mori, and good afternoon to all of our participants here from Phnom Penh as well as from other provinces. Uh, and also good morning to all of our colleagues in Berlin. Um, so uh, as earlier, our colleague in Berlin already briefed you about programs um, or studies that you want to do in Germany. So from my side, um, a bit of introduction. My name is Katie and I'm a program manager at CAS Cambodia in charge of scholarship programs. So um, I will brief you about the programs within Cambodia, including internship at CAS Cambodia um, office Phnom Penh, as well as with other kinds of uh, traineeship programs that are available under each of our objectives. Uh, so first of all, allow me to share my screen a bit uh, because I prepared some slides so that it's easier for everyone to go through and follow up with me. So the very first uh, programs that we are having and to support uh, local students is called Surplus Scholarship or it's also known as um, Adenau Young Scholars for Excellence. So basically, we already opened our application and it will be open until the end of this month. So basically, what exactly is Adenau Young Scholars for Excellence program? So it's actually a, full, uh, a scholarship for full time Cambodian students. So it does not apply to um, whether you're in the city or you're in the province. It's applicable to all um, Cambodian students as long as you are uh, currently in school, either in university or in master degrees. So you are welcome to apply for this program. And uh, um, for this program itself, our intention is purely to uh, prepare young Cambodians for their academic and professional endeavors. So in that we will have not just providing financial support, but also other kinds of trainings. Um, so these are the detail like requirement, eligibility, what kinds of offers that we, we will offer to um, each of you who are got selected to be part of the Adenau Young Scholars for Excellence. So in general, as a requirement, like I've mentioned, if you are pursuing bachelor or master degrees in Cambodia, then you are very much welcome to apply for this program. But uh, we will also try to assess uh, what you are studying as well is we really want to see how relevant you are to our objective and our work because uh, we want to support you but also to provide you access to many other kinds of opportunities and our work that we are currently doing. 
So um, for that, it would be the main re uh, requirement and eligibility and as well as offers or benefits that you receive from the Adenauer Young Scholars for Excellence, it would be you would receive uh, an award of 250 US dollars from us uh, monthly, but the mandate is only for a uh, 12 month. But then you would also, re uh, there's a possibility for you to also uh, request for an extension for another year, but that application will be assessed by your performance, how much you engage with us, whether you're active or not, um, how much you have contributed to our work as well. So that would also be part of the assessment if you happen to wanting to request for an extension for another period. But that would also mean that you will also need to be in school still, not that you are graduated, because if you're graduated by then, you would not be able to uh, apply for this um, program. And what are the significant or the highlights of this program is that you get to access to all of our events that we organize. We would always um, put you in the loop as well as invite you to um, our projects as well as events and any kinds of publications that we are having. But at the same time, because we really want to support you uh, professionally as well. So we will also provide an exclusive soft or hard skill trainings during the period of 12 months. So it means that you receive financial support to um, fulfill your, your needs in academic sphere but then you also receive trainings as well as um, inputs from us professionally uh, working from a perspective of CAS Cambodia as well. At the same time, you will have a chance to connect with um, experts or experts here. It does not have to be an international expert like our colleague around the world, but then uh, you will also have a chance to connect with local experts who we are uh, currently cooperating um, in terms of our partners and at the same time publishing your own papers, but this is optional. And that, that also depends on what kinds of research publication that we are having and whether your scope of study or scope of work is really relevant to this as well. So if you're interested in applying for the Athena Young Scholars for Excellence, please feel free to visit our website as well as contact my colleague, Mr. Fasillo, who is the moderator today. Um, uh, or also send your letter to me as well. So both of us are in charge of scholarship and all kinds of other internships. So please feel free to do so. So that would be one of the program itself. Uh, another one, um, oh, I forgot to add also, uh, because during the program, it does not mean that you receive the financial support from us every time. Uh, I mean, without any, um, without any, uh, efforts, I, I would say, because then we will also have a credit system. It, mean, it means that uh, you have to complete a total of six credits to fulfill the scholarship. So during the whole month that, during the whole 12 months that you are receiving financial support from us, you would also need to attend the trainings, workshop and everything. But by the time you attend each of the trainings or workshop or anything, presentation or contribute in any academic um, publication, you will receive a credit from us. And if you complete six credits during the whole period, then you're safe. <laughs> but then, um, you know, you receive the whole duration for around 12 months. So uh, it only took like one uh, workshop a month if you really want to uh, fulfill your credits very fast. So that will be about the Adana Young Scholars um, for Excellence program. Uh, second, I would also want to brief about internship program at CAS Cambodia, uh, which not many might not know about it. So internship at CAS Cambodia is open like yearly, so you are welcome to always submit your application to us by just sending your motivation letter as well as CV in one PDF file to us. So the requirement is not so strict because we are also thinking of uh, providing access to you and uh, opportunities to you to learn about CAS Cambodia and, and the work that we are doing as well. So the requirement here, just like um, previously I've mentioned as well, it also depends on your study areas, uh, whether you're in political science, economic, journalism, or law that are very relevant to our objective. And you um, not necessarily to be like in the fourth year or a freshman, as long as you're in university, um, but then we prioritize someone who is second year or higher so that uh, you get the basic of the work much more than you're just starting with your university. And no working experience required here in this case. So uh, please feel free to consider this opportunity if you're interested. And in terms of office, you will be part of us for three months or you can also extend to um, six months as well if you uh, really want to be 
uh, to learn more about us and continue to be part of this team. Um, so you will be able to uh, work with us closely to implement projects as well as uh, assisting in um, writing or editing any articles or research that we are doing. And last but not least, you will also receive a monthly allowance, allowance from us as well. So this is the internship opportunities and other uh, things that you could also consider to be part of us. And other programs right here, it's also very, um, very uh, inclusive for all of the youth across the country. Um, so this is this will be um, an objective based programs. So we have six objectives. So the very first one is environmental protection and sustainable development. So under that, we actually have an, uh, think green energy uh, related training programs for youth. Uh, trainings for uh, a six month period on energy efficiency, but that program is already uh, done, but then please feel free to always follow up with us because there's always new programs coming up every year under each objective. And right now we are also open an application for a clean energy fellowship, uh, which we target young professionals who are very interested um, in, in, in clean energy. So please also check it out if you are very interested in this specific field. Um, second rule of law, we also have CAS Fly, which is uh, CAS um, Female Legal. Um, so it refers, it opens for specifically for law students um, who are very much interested in having further access to professional spheres of law, um, learning more about the topic, getting connected with other legal experts. So if you're interested, if you're a law student uh, or having any related to law background, please feel free to consider this. Another, uh, the third objective that we're working is youth empowerment. So under that, we also have a program called CASPIA, uh, which is uh, political education, um, political empowerment um, related uh, matter uh, issues. I mean, so if you're interested in uh, learning about um, Empower, uh, youth empowerment and their participation in discussing on socio-political topic, please feel free to check this out as well because right now the application is open and waiting for your application uh, to turn into us as well. And three more objectives that we are working, uh, international relations, we also have Cast Horizon. So it's the same target groups on youth, but we target different uh, scope of studies who are having from uh, who are having different backgrounds so that you have the right place to go to in order to enhance your not just personal uh, skills like leadership, but also professional skills on specific matters or specific topic that are being discussed at a, at a more uh, regional level. And also uh, we have digitalization, but we do not have any uh, specific project yet, um, but please stay tuned with us. And with media and journalism, my colleague will further dive deep into it uh, as she will be providing a, a presentation later on. So please uh, feel, uh, please keep up with um, the next presenter as well. So last but not least, that will be all for me uh, regarding the scholarships as well as programs um, that are available in CAS Cambodia Phnom Penh office. And these are our official social media, Facebook, Instagram, and website. So if you're interested in any of the information, like very detailed one, please feel free to visit and stay updated with each of these uh, social media channel. And um, I would like to pass on back to uh, my colleague, uh, Mr. Pasillo, to take up the moderation. Thank you. Thank you, Katie, for this tour de force through what is undoubtedly a lot of programs. As you can see, we offer training programs, courses, and scholarships uh, throughout uh, a wide variety of fields. So I hope that uh, there was something in it for you. In, um, as Katie has said, uh, with the next speaker, Mr. Sandali, we will dive uh, headlong into uh, what we are doing in the field of journalism and media. So, Sander, um, Please. 
Yeah, thank you, uh, Mori, for a very nice introduction and uh, good afternoon to uh, everyone in Phnom Penh and also our good morning to our colleague in Berlin. So uh, let me introduce myself. My name is uh, Sanda and I'm also a program manager in charge of uh, media development and um, journalism uh, at, at CAS Cambodia. So um, you, you, might ha you already have heard about the um, um, research trip in Germany uh, master PhD program as well as internships uh, in at Phnom Penh office. But uh, besides of all of this uh, activity, there are also many um, program and activity that there are um, has also have been working um, to support media and journalism education at Department of Media and Communications. All, my, uh, all of you might have heard about uh, DMC at Department of um, Roja University uh, of Phnom Penh uh, since 2001. Um, so, uh, because I also prepare uh, some um, slide presentation, so let me um, first uh, share you the slide. Um, so, um, for, for the past 20 years, uh, we have created countless programs and activity to ensure the uh, high quality of graduate at DMC. But because of the time constraint, I will uh, today will only pick up three main activity that we are doing at the moment and um, why um, uh, you should apply for a DMC program. Um, so, first of all, is the bachelor degree uh, scholarships. Um, so every year after the national exam uh, in grad work has, uh, has provided 30 seats of scholarships to um, young Cambodian um, students uh, with, with different background, uh, geo, uh, uh, geography and, and culture. So um, at DMC, we, um, we aim to produce the high quality of graduate who are um, um, potential and positive contributor in the field of communications, uh, media, and of course, uh, in journalism sector. So we, uh, we, um, uh, we ensure that students who receive the academic training at DMC have a deep uh, journalistic uh, uh, capacity that can apply to international um, journalistic standard. Um, as you might have known that, uh, that there is, uh, most of us right now would like to consume news on, um, smartphone computer that connect to internet um, that, that connect to internet um, so uh, so at DMC we trying to develop the curriculum and educations program that that can adapt to the changes of uh, of the digitalizations together with DMCs and um, other German organizations like GIZ, DAD, we uh, developed the standardized and looking forward curriculum to sustain the, the quality of its bachelor program. Uh, and we equip um, students with the skill that they are, uh, need uh, proactively to take control and benefit from uh, with the new trend. And of course, to keep them uh, with journalism's ethic, professionalism and value added. Um, so um, um, uh, many of our graduate actually land their career at a national and international media agency. They are holding a decision-making uh, uh, positions and also become a professional journalist. And even some of them uh, uh, don't become a journalist, but they end up with a uh, working at local, international, local and international organizations that demonstrate and improve the uh, quality of uh, freedom of press in Cambodia. And of course, uh, other uh, alumni also received the master um, um, uh, degree to uh, many countries such as uh, Germany, Australia, US, UK, and even in some um, in some some in Europe European country. One of our example is uh, our next speaker, Mr. Bissan. He also one of our alumni as well, and he right now is doing the uh, master program uh, in Germany. So uh, next, you will hear. Um, about his journey to Germany. Um, so besides of this uh, bachelor program, CAS also uh, provides support to um, junior students uh, to conduct their, in, uh, their internship abroad as well. Um, so every year we select uh, seven students um, and those students will receive the financial, financial support to do their two-month internship in Germany. Thailand, uh, the Philippines, and of course, in the futures in Laos to practice their journalistic um, 
skill uh, in in uh, media agencies such as Deutsche Villa, Kia International in Germany, as well as uh, the nations, the Bangkok Post and Thai PBS in Thailand. However, because of the um, COVID-19 outbreak, we are not um, allowed to send those students um, to do their internship uh, since last year and this year. But um, to ensure that students still uh, are still able to practice their journalistic skill, um, recently we introduced the new initiative called Young Journalist Traineeship Program that of course provide a chance uh, for students to, to develop their um, professions at national and international uh, media agency in Cambodia. Um, at the moment, we are still on the pro pro process of selecting the candidate and we hope to make the announcement of the results soon. So with, with the CAS financial support, they will do um, six month traineeship at um, independent and respected uh, uh, newsroom in Phnom Penh, including um, South, Southeast Asia, Globe, the Y of Democracy, Cambodia's New, from Pinkos, and um, the uh, Make My News. Um, um, besides of uh, this two main activity, uh, um, cast, uh, we also ensure that students are not mainly uh, develop their uh, third core, only their third core knowledge, but also provide we provide physical tool for them to practice as well. So at DMC, we deploy a computer lab with um, up-to-date equipment, or, or we can say that um, Macbook uh, desktop, and also radio and TV uh, stations that allow students to um, develop their uh, OU and uh, visual editing skill as well. And, and of course, they can uh, also uh, uh, practice to produce their own program as, uh, as well. So with all of this modern uh, uh, equipment, it will enable them to produce the high quality and variety of content in um, journalism sector during their study at DMC. Um, so this just uh, the three main activity that um, uh, and this this just the three main activity that uh, we are uh, doing to support um, DMC. But there are more extra curriculum that students will benefit. Uh, from uh, when they enroll at DMC, including um, including a family uh, family trip, DMC family trip, uh, guest lecture with local and international um, uh, expert um, DMC alumni, as well as uh, uh, many more activities. So with all of those activities, students will of course ex expand their knowledge and build a good network among uh, local and international friends as well. So um, if you are interested, um, you, your friend, or even you have a family member who uh, want to uh, pursue a career as a journalist, uh, DMC will be the only and the best uh, media and communication department that I uh, we, we highly recommend it to you. So um, follow our Facebook page or DMC Facebook page to keep an eye uh, on updated uh, information about our program. And, um, and I think uh, I would like to end my presentations here. And um, if you have any questions, um, uh, feel free to ask during the uh, uh, break room sessions. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Susanda for uh, this uh, overview of uh, what we're doing to help um, young journalists in Cambodia. If you are interested in becoming a journalist in the end, uh, please uh, always reach out uh, to all of us and Susanda um, to fulfill that dream and we can see what we can do. Now we go back once more to Germany, uh, this time for uh, to hear from Mr. Pisen Su, um, who is currently our uh, scholarship holder from us studying in Erfurt, if I'm not mistaken. Pisen, please enlighten us about your um, time in Germany and how you came there. Yes, I hope you can hear me well. Um, good morning and good um, um, afternoon to everyone. So my name is Pisen, so as I have already, I was already mentioned, um, I'm doing a master degree currently in the second year of my study in master in global communication in Erfurt. Um, and I got funded by uh, Conrad Adenauer Stiftung. 
And also, as Ms. Sandal uh, mentioned earlier, I'm also an undergraduate alumni from the DMC, which is also funded by CAS Cambodia and Conrad Adonai El Sizong um, in general. So for my part, I'm talking about my experience in Germany, which is also a little tip on how to write um, a letter of uh, motivation. So the first one I'm talking about my life in Germany, I divided into two small parts. The first one is university. So what I have observed here is that the university, the classroom style is conducted in a seminar style so that um, every session, the professor expect you to read the given material and then you have to discuss and critique about the theory and and you, you reflect whether it is applicable to the current situation or not. And of course, because my master degree is like a research uh, master degree. So I had to write a term paper at the end of the semester, which is also an exam, but not like a seat exam. And of course, this is a master, a graduate level. So you should be expect to do a lot of reading. So. So here I'm just giving you like a hint what you are expect to do since some of you might be coming to Germany in the near future. So a lot of reading is something that you should be aware in mind. And life in general, um, I found my life in Germany is like an adventure because um, I learn new things every day. Like every time I step out of my dormitory, I, I learned something new either through people or through society in general or through the university because of the different culture. And also because um, I would like to point out the differences of the weather because in, in our country we have only two weather, but here we have they have four weather and sometimes it could be like the weather could be extreme, like extremely cool or extremely cold or extremely warm just a few several months ago it was so cold but right now it's kind of overheating the weather because it's summer and the bonus i have two points for the bonus the first one is travel so i think all of you have already know, already known because germany is a part of the european union so cross bordering between the member is possible but it just now because of the covid so it's kind of restricted, but um, yeah, in general, you, you can cross boring between the members of the EU. And I think that's that's also the one of the main reasons that you want to come to Europe, Europe as well, right? You want to travel. And just like Mr. Stan uh, Linchelski, he mentioned earlier, and also Mr. Amos um, Oham, he recommend, um, German skill is um, highly recommended um, if you want to integrate yourself into the German society during your stay in Germany. I think more or less you shouldn't be like really that um, at a high level or in like a professional level, but at least you have some um, intermediate level of the German so that you, it can facilitate your daily life in Germany a lot. And the last part from me is that um, on my tips on writing the letter of motivation. So I think everybody has their own way of writing. So I'm just pointing out uh, the three main parts that I think you should include in your letter. Um, the first one is introduction. So I think the introduction should be covering the the purpose of your letter, your a brief of your academic background, your experience, and your goal. Um, because uh, introduction give an impression to the scholarship committee, like what you want to do in life and what's the purpose of the letter. And the second one is why this program, why um, CAS scholarship program? Probably because um, your aspiration and um, what CAS is looking for the candidate um, you both have a, share the same interest so that it can make you to become the right or uh, the, the right candidate or the outstanding applicant for the program. And also do not forget to point out your future goal after the program, what you are going to do. It shouldn't be stretching out 
like um, your five year plan, your 10 years plan or your 20 years plan. However, it should be like um, precise and meaningful for that part. Yes, and that should be all from my part. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for, uh, uh, for giving us this more hands-on take on what it actually means to be a scholarship holder of CUSP. So um, this is now for everyone. As I said earlier, um, we uh, were thinking of dividing uh, the, uh, all of you into three different groups um, with each group having uh, of some of our experts so that uh, you can ask your questions uh, if there are any in a more um, uh, private um, space uh, with the opportunity for longer answers and a bit more discussion. So uh, for those of you who haven't seen our program, um, that will mean that group A with Mr. Amos Helms and me um, um, will be a breakout session. Group uh, B with um, Stanislav Linczewski and uh, Ms. Tuch um, will uh, remain in the main uh, room and uh, also answer uh, questions from Facebook if there are any. And Group C with Dr. Peter Hefele, Ms. Susanda Lee and um, Mr. Pisen Su will uh, be another breakout session. Um, so if the technology permits, uh, we will be uh, sent out into breakout sessions um, by our colleagues um, from tech uh, in a moment. And then I hope um, you will have uh, some questions for us. See you in a moment. Hi everyone. So I think um, the rest already go into each of the respective breakout rooms. So within this room, which is also known as the main room, which is also live on Facebook. So uh, from Cambodia side, it will be me who is in charge of questions and programs that are available uh, at CAS Cambodia. And, and also having my colleague, um, Mr. Linczewski, who is in um, Berlin, who will in charge of uh, answering questions about uh, opportunities and scholarships to study in Germany. So if you have any questions, please feel free to drop it in the chat box right here, or uh, you wish to be more interactive, you can also unmute yourself and just directly ask us any question as well. Yes, thank you, Ms. Uh, Tuch. I hope I said your now name. Um, properly. Yes. And um, yeah, for those of you who are here and who would like to ask a question, I would really also ask you to put your camera on if possible. So it would be also, I think, more pleasant for us to, to engage with you. Thanks. Or you could also use the raise your hand function. So that we could also take note if you have any, um, I mean, you wanna raise any questions for us as well. So until, ah, there is one question already, but yes. I will know then later. So uh, we will go to the first person who raised uh, his or her hand first. Oh, okay, his hand, sorry. Um, so you may, do you want to unmute yourself or you prefer uh, leaving it in the chat box? Uh, yes. Okay, please. Uh, yeah, thank you. So um, thank you for the presentation. So I have a few questions regard to the program in Cambodia that you mentioned. Uh, I want to know more about the surplus scholarship, the Young Scholar Scholarship one. It required GPA in 3.0, but it didn't mention that it need to be a... So oh, for instance, like now I'm freshman, but I'm not finished my semester yet. So I don't know my GPA. Could I apply in that program or it require at least you in the second year? Thank you. 
Thank you very much for the question. So um, basically, if you're in your freshman year, you can actually um, submit your transcript during your high school. So that could also be as a reference um, regarding your study performance as well. So as long as you're in university, uh, you can just submit it to us. And because we also understand the difficulty during COVID pandemic, um, not, having, not being able to have full access to uh, having the official transcript, we also accept any kinds of transcript that you're having in hand first and submit to us the official one later on due to the long process. So uh, please feel free to uh, be very open and uh, submit your application uh, within the deadline as well. I hope that I could answer your question. Um, yes, yes, yes. Uh, thank you. I want more. Uh, one more thing is the intern program for you mentioned that also it's not it's not just for um, like, like you mentioned that you also encourage for anyone but uh, would be better if they're in second year. Uh, so could a freshman in, uh, apply for that? Uh, and what is the intern required you to do? Like you need to be full-time at GAS or it's just a part-time or any section that you could do it um, online, for instance, right in this current situation? Thank you. Thank you very much. That's all from my question. <laughs> yeah, so uh, with regards to the internship, uh, you can also apply even if you're in a freshman, um, but it's just we wanted to uh, prioritize more if you are in the second year because uh, we believe that it could help you foster more on your skills and your performance, but then it's it's a very case-by-case uh, -case basis. It depends on all, it also depends on your letter, how much uh, we can see uh, about you from, or learn about you from your letter as well as your um, experiences as well. So it's not a, a fixed requirement that you have to be in the second year um, to be able to apply for this internship. So you can, um, even if you're in your freshman year, you can definitely apply for it. And yes, the internship, it will be a full-time one for the whole period of three months. So that would also, um, you might also need to uh, manage your schedule accordingly if you happen to be very interested in this scholarship. Uh, I mean, in the internship, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. And I can see another hand raised by uh, Whitney. You may um, raise your question. Uh, Whitney, you're on mute. Uh, I mean, you're mute. I'm sorry. <laughs> good afternoon from Cambodia um, and good morning from Cambodia. Um, so um, I hope everyone is doing fine during this pandemic crisis. Um, so I would I, I have a few questions regarding um, regarding the scholarship to study in Germany for master degree. Um, so because because now we are having a problem of coronavirus, um, I would like to ask if is it still applicable or am I still able to apply for the master scholarship grants um, for the upcoming winter semester um, in October 2021? Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your question, um, Vichni. I hope I said your name correctly. So it's a very good and relevant question indeed. Um, last year was a very challenging year for students and especially for international students in Germany. And it was also quite challenging to even get to Germany, um, the whole visa process and etc. But it was possible. And even in the height of the Corona crisis, which uh, the beginning of winter semester last year, um, still 99%, um, I think, of our scholars who got the positive answer from us were able to come to Germany to study here. Um, it depends usually also on the um, embassy in each country, which we, of course, do not control in the visa application process. Uh, but um, um, with, our, um, 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 with our scholarship, Usually everybody can go to the embassy and apply for a visa and um, get the visa. How long the process uh, takes, uh, etc., uh, might vary from embassy to embassy. And there were, of course, uh, some difficulties because some um, the embassy required at some point um, um, a proof of um, studies in the university, meaning that you really have to be in Germany for that. Since then, they um, eased up a bit these kinds of restrictions so students can keep coming to Germany. So if you are admitted to a uni university in Germany, um, yes, you can also apply for a visa and come to study in Germany. That, um, that hasn't changed. There were um, some restrictions about German courses, 
I'm not sure where that, where that stands. Therefore, last year we were not able to bring any um, scholars to do German courses in, in Germany. Um, but for the coming winter semester, coming back to your um, question, yes, uh, it's of course um, possible. I hope I answered your question or was there something else you wanted to ask? Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Um, Lenchevsky. Uh, Mr. Lenchevsky, I, I, I get the whole picture of um, my question, my questions that I've asked you now. Um, also, um, there is another question that I would like to ask for you. Um, so in the with regard to the issue of coronavirus, if I would like to I um, if I would like to apply for this scholarship. Um, how long would it take um, for the selection process until I know the result when I will be selected? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so as I said in my short overview, we have two kinds of selection processes. Um, one is for um, school, international scholars that are already in Germany and uh, are planning to study or um, know that they're going to start, for example, in the winter semester. So the deadline here is July 15th um, each year, also this year um, for the next academic year. And therefore, I would say that you do have to have some patience and um, depending on our capacities, depending on how many applications we get, how many of them are good. So it's um, lots of uh, variables that's uh, difficult to uh, foresee, but it does take a few months um, to, to get an answer. Um, and as I said, usually we do the interviews um, then in um, autumn, um, so um, beginning of the um, academic semester, so around October, November, and then you can expect an answer. Yes, end of November or already um, perhaps beginning of December. Um, yes, but that's no guarantee. That's more or less how the schedule looks. The second application process through our offices in, in abroad. And as I said, in 2022, um, we uh, might be going to Southeast Asia or probably going to Southeast Asia. Um, and there the application process um, is a bit different. But still, of course, it takes, um, depending on the deadline um, from your moment of application to the um, final answer, um, a few weeks or uh, months. However, if you apply um, abroad for a scholarship through our offices, there we're also uh, flexible, with, flexible with the beginning um, of your studies, meaning you have uh, one year from the moment you get your um, yes, your green light from us, meaning you've been accepted um, to start your studies if you're still abroad. Uh, but that's again for this application process abroad. So yeah, you could either try and apply um, to this um, inner um, German um, application process or wait until next year and see uh, if it would be possible to apply through our, um, through our office. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. So um, we also have another question in our chat box. Maybe it also um, get back to Mr. Linchevsky. Um, so the question is about uh, what are the available programs of master programs to Germany? Uh, what kinds of website we can browse that I'd say you already uh, put in the chat box. Uh, maybe we can rephrase it again. And also whether there's any specific law um, program available for master studies in Germany. Maybe you could also share your experiences in case of um, there's anyone applying um, and successfully get the, receive the application in law in law field as well. Mm -hmm. So um, regarding that, we expect all applicants to find their program on their own. It's not something we assist with. It's also um, important maybe to point out at this point. So it's up to the applicants. And since there are really hundreds and thousands of programs in Germany, uh, we do not uh, and cannot recommend um, or um, um, do anything regarding that. Um, so um, there's a list, I think um, yeah, Isabel posted something in the chat. And there are, of course, other sources. The there are there is always a good source um, for that, for um, seeing what kind of programs there are um, in Germany. So um, in regarding law, it's also like regarding other programs, cannot recommend anything. Just to point out two things that are relevant for application to our program is the minimum study time, as I said, four semesters. So if you're planning to do an LLM of one year, that's unfortunately not possible with, um, with us. 
And the second um, point, which is also important in that regard, are um, study fees or university fees. So the only thing we do recommend is to really um, check what are the study fees, because we do not cover uh, study fees at private universities, uh, which can also sum up up to um, 10,000 euros um, a year. Um, for example, uh, we can only reimburse uh, um, university fees or semester fees um, in exceptional cases. Therefore, we always recommend first to check the public universities in Germany, which are as good and usually are also better as, uh, as, the, as a private institution. So that would be my only tip in this uh, regard. And other than that, um, yeah, you can just um, check and see what um, fits you, um, fits every one of you. Yeah. Thank you, Isabel, also for the, for the links. Thank you. I hope it answers your question as well to um, Daily Lekana. Uh, otherwise, if you have any clarification to be um, clarified, please also feel free to drop it in the chat box as well. Um, so whether there's any other questions from our participants? If not right now, you can still think about it. And I would like to ask Stas maybe to tell us about how the selection process works, like to go more into detail, how many stages you have, what are questions you would be asked. And yeah, before you can choose uh, the applicants, of course, you from your experience in the Middle East or other continents, but that might be also interesting for our Cambodian um, perspective scholars. Sure, great question, and I really didn't have a time to um, um, tell about that uh, in my um, first introduction. Yeah, so um, how to apply? Um, I sent a wonderful uh, website already uh, before. I can uh, post it here again. So if you are applying within our um, internal German um, procedure, it's pretty straightforward. You have a link there. You have a portal where you have to um, register and um, submit all your um, all your details and uh, submit all the necessary documents. Um, I can go shortly through all the documents uh, which you need, but um, I don't think it's really necessary. You can always find everything in the um, in the website. So this is the first stage uh, of applying. Uh, you submit all the necessary documents and then you wait and see if um, everything is correct, if everything required for you was submitted. Uh, my colleagues then. Um, uh, maybe send you an email and um, let you know if something is missing. And the second stage that um, we read these applications twice um, in the headquarters, um, usually with support of external also um, um, partners, uh, university professors, as well as CAS um, colleagues from the um, international department. And then we decide whether to invite the person to an interview um, or not. And this is then um, basically the second and last stage, the invitation to an interview. Um, if there's no Corona, we do the interviews in Berlin and you get invited um, to the interview and um, with a selection committee of three, usually um, persons, you have a 45 minute um, interview or a talk in which we basically want to get to know you and learn about your um, yeah, your goals, your motivation, um, why are you interested in this kind of scholarship and about your future plans um, and etc. So after this interview, uh, we give the answers um, yes or no. And then the second process, which I also um, said, and I hope it's not too confusing, but it's really interesting, important to um, differentiate is the application process to our offices abroad. And this is, again, um, relevant only if we decide to have a selection process in your country or in your region. Uh, in this case, our offices abroad collect the, um, the application process, where they publish the announcement, first of all. Um, I'm saying what is the deadline because then they have also specific deadline for each selection day. Um, then they select all the documents. So there's a much bigger involvement of the um, office abroad in this uh, process. And um, then after selecting, um, after collecting all the um, um, the applications, um, it's basically the same way. We read it uh, twice. This time, the office also is involved, of course, in the reading process of the application and the recommendation whether to invite person to an interview or not. And then we invite the person to an interview. And as I said, in case, where, if there's no corona, then of course we also travel abroad. So somebody from the headquarters, from the scholarship department 
and we conduct the interviews um, in the um, country or in the office of CAS um, in this country, um, but the format is pretty similar, um, 45 minutes, um, three-person committee, and the interviews always take place in German, maybe also important to note because as I said, German is a criteria for us. Of course, we do not expect you to, um, yes, to um, explain your PhD project in fluent German if you're going to write it in English, but we do expect a good level of German that you can um, yeah, converse with us um, uh, in German. And uh, yes, and then abroad, exactly like uh, in, in Germany, you get then the, the answer um, usually within two or three weeks after the interviews, whether you were accepted and then, um, yeah, we overtake from there, my colleagues in the Department of Scholarship. So I hope it was not too uh, dry and bureaucratic. Um, of an explanation, but if you have any more questions about the necessary documents or something like that, um, I'll be also happy to um, to say. Um, as I said, we have masters and PhD. I obviously, for master for PhD, the expectations are also a bit higher, so you also need a few more, um, bit more documents in order to um, to apply. But um, yeah, everything is on our website. Thank you, Stas. I think that was very elaborate again to have a more detailed run through. Um, I think I can also share a few concrete questions, which are always nice um, to have a backup that also applicants here have to answer. For example, the basic who was Konrad Adenauer? Um, what is the CDU, the party that we are connected to in Germany? I think this is all information you can find on our website, but nonetheless, um, there are surprisingly always some participants who did not check our website um, before the interview, so I think this is one recommendation we all can give. And then maybe uh, not only read and repeat <laughs> the exact website, which is very easy now when you have digital interviews to just open the tab on the side, but yeah, the interviewers might also recognize that, so maybe the scholarship applicants should also think about what to how to phrase it in their own words, how they um, yeah, recognized CAS and how they found out about it or were already in touch with our scholarships. Yeah, thanks for that. I really forgot that thing, that part of your answer. So yeah, very good, um, very good point. Of course, as I said at the beginning, we expect also um, political interest, it's true we take scholars from every possible field, but of course, uh, interest in uh, in politics and in our work, so we also expect you, of course, to know what is the foundation, what does it does, and why does it um, have any interest um, to you, and there, of course, also we expect critical thinking, as I said, we support human rights and democracy, and we expect our scholars to engage in discussions in Germany, so they expect them also to um, critically analyze uh, the political situation in Germany, in Europe, in Asia, in Cambodia. Um, so um, yes, that's a very good um, point um, regarding the interviews. Thank you, Stas. And one more note on the chat, questions from the chat. Um, there was one question again on where to find all the info on master scholarship. So Stas already posted the one link for the German language application process, but the other one, we will also share the information after this event again with all the links. You will find it on our social media, but also more um, traceable on our website. We will make sure that it's the first page on our website. So just stay tuned, uh, maybe tonight or tomorrow it will be updated. So thank you for hinting us to that. It's a big CAS website, so it might be difficult to find, we know that. Yes, that's also fine. It's it's quite confusing. That's why I always trying to stress out the different the differences and the different possibilities. So I posted our website here again on how to apply for the inner German uh, selection procedure regarding Cambodia office and whether we will have an application procedure in 2022 there. Um, there you have to follow then the website. Um, um, yeah, beginning of 2022, or maybe already in the end of 2021 and see um, if there are any news about that. As I said, it's not um, final yet. So yeah, so that's the application process abroad if and when in 2022 regarding yeah, the application process in Germany. Yes, you can access the website that I posted here.
So maybe one last question since uh, in two minutes, everyone will be, will be back into this main room. So if you have any one last questions for us, please also let us know. I also take challenging, difficult questions, not all. So anything you might want to ask. That is very a bold offer from you. <laughs> Maybe not about Cambodia. I have to admit I'm not an expert. I would leave that to you. Yeah, thank you. But it seems like all the presentation were so elaborate already that all the applicants know already what they need to do. Um, and the best, I'm very happy to see so many people interested in our kind of scholarships. And yeah, it's lovely to have this opportunity to clarify the different types of scholarships and opportunities. Yes, and I was happy I got the chance to be here um, since my colleague was not able. So I'm happy to see you again, Isabel, and to cooperate at least in this event with you. Very much so, likewise, from my side. Because, um, yeah, Kass and I go way back. <laughs> I used to be an intern for Kass as well uh, in former times at Kass Jerusalem office in Israel. And Das used to work there, not during my time, unfortunately, but a bit later. So we met up back in Berlin when we both joined the headquarters uh, in 20, when was it? 18 again or 17? 19, 19. 19 for you. Okay. Yes. So I just see thank yous and people are entering from the other rooms again. So let's see. So, Katie, if you want to share some experience from the CAS Cambodia scholarships, meanwhile, Mauricio is back now as well. Hello. Hi, um, so yeah, just like Isabel asked me earlier to share some of my experiences with CAS. So I also actually started off as an intern uh, and luckily there was a position open and I applied for it and continue as uh, being part, like as an official member of CAS Cambodia team. So that would be as well as um, an opportunity for all of you here if you are interested and maybe start it off as an intern with us as well. We never know and never know what you will be uh, either part of us or go for something larger. We never know about that. So uh, I would very um, encourage you to also like try to experience with us and to receive all of the exposures that we are having through the internship as well. And so yeah, get back to Mori. How was your room? Thank you very much. Um, yeah, since uh, some of us got a bit uh, cut short in, uh, with the questions, um, I would just offer this um, an, uh, as another opportunity. If there are still questions from some of you, please feel free um, to raise your hands now to uh, address us. So if you want to learn something about what living in, uh, in Germany is like from Pisen, or if you want to learn more about internships at our office or how to get to Germany from uh, one of our experts from Berlin, uh, please feel free to do so. Otherwise, um, yeah. We are also prepared to close a bit early today, but uh, I would uh, like to give you this opportunity still with everybody assembled to answer your questions now. Is German easy to learn? Yes, uh, probably a question difficult to answer as a German. Pisen, maybe uh, you would like to say something about that. Yes. Uh, <laughs> no, it's German and easy. I would say, if you have any experience, have you had any language of French before? <laughs> they could be similar because they have like French and German. I would say um, they have the gender, the sex of the noun. Yeah, similar to French. Uh, in terms of comparing between our language, like Khmer and German, it's like entirely different. So. I would say yes and no. <laughs> it depends on you, like whether you really want to learn German. If you really want, if you are determined to master in German language, they could not, it's not something that is impossible for you to learn. I would say that. All right. Um, no you know, there's a, that's German saying it says German is an easy language, even the Germans managed to learn it. 
that should give all of you some hope. Uh, maybe if everything works and you can apply for um, um, for our uh, scholarship program next year. Um, I have a question from Mr. Lehorn Kram. Um, would you like to post that uh, yourself, please? Mr. Kram. Uh, hello. Uh, hello. Yes. Uh, my question is what, like now I'm pursuing master degree at Cambodia, in Cambodia. So is there any exchange program? Like if I study I'm on in Cambodia and I want to explore under in Germany. Is it possible for me? Uh, if there are any funded by CAS? Yes. Can you got my question? Uh, I think so. Um, maybe, um, well, exchange programs directly, um, we do not fund, but maybe. Um, Stas, uh, you would like uh, to go into that a bit? Sure, if I understood the question correctly, um, then um, the answer from our side is, unfortunately, no, we support programs that are in Germany. So we expect you also during your studies to um, be in Germany. So you cannot do, for example, uh, master programs that are one year in Germany and one year um, somewhere abroad. And um, as I said, also the minimum uh, time of your studies and our program should be four semesters. Um, maybe Amos can say something about shorter um, research days. But uh, if I may add, you should indeed uh, search for university exchange change programs. I don't know for the moment which German universities have are in, I think not much. Generally speaking, there are some programs to support these kind of exchanges in, in other countries through the universities. So this it has to be cleared case by case, but um, Isabella, I don't think we have currently exchange programs between German and Cambodian universities not come to my mind. No, yeah, sorry, yeah, just a brief interaction. Um, yes, it's difficult for these, if you say you just want to go for a semester while you're studying in Cambodia, you would like to exchange uh, to go for a semester to Germany, that is the universities have to cooperate for that. And that is very difficult to find at the moment. We were working on it with DMC to find a university on communications in Germany that would cooperate, but this is still an ongoing process. So for now, this would be also not possible from our side. I mean, it could be the case that you have, for example, to do an internship in, um, I don't know, in a company which is located in some other European countries. Um, we would not forbid to do this, uh, but it doesn't mean that you would get an extra support to do this uh, in, a, in the other country. Uh, we would keep in the, in the framework of what we agreed on. And um, if this internship is part um, and integrated in the in the time schedule of of the of the master program and then we don't we don't have any problem with this all right uh, yes um uh, mr mr or mrs Seavlang teng if you would like to speak up um and ask your question mm -hmm. to all of us uh yeah so uh, um I'm not sure whether I want to clarify whether um, like the scholarship for master degree, is there any, um, like can we choose any universities in Germany, whether it is private or public, or it is only limited to public university? Um, I think I can also answer the question, or do you want Amos? Well, I'll start and you can uh, you can add. So uh, for, our, for us, there's no limitation. You can choose any university um, which is uh, recognized and the landscape is really big, but we do recommend um, public universities which are um, as good, if not better, are as private universities in Germany because an important note is also given our um, group that we, not, we do not cover tuition fees for private um, university that can reach, of course, up to 10,000 euros a year. And we can also uh, reimburse tuition fees and, and to a very extended uh, and to a very um, limited amount and only in very exceptional cases. So if you can, of course, allow a private university, that's, uh, that's also fine. But from that reason, we recommend usually public um, university. 
it's exactly the same as us. Um, we do uh, reimburse uh, the so-called semester fees, which are, it's a kind of an administration fees for the university, which is about 250 to up to 300 euros um, uh, per semester. Um, that is uh, part of the reimbursements we, we do. Um, but as uh, Stas already said, um, we are not limited to the choice of universities, but we are not able to pay for any tuition fees. All right, I will quickly jump in there uh, just as a clarification on the admin fee. Um, usually in most German university towns that also covers public transport. So this is not uh, $300, uh, 300 euros that are gone in the wind. If uh, there's no further questions, I would give you one last chance. Otherwise uh, we would now begin to wrap up. So please feel free to come forward now. But it looks to me as if everything has been conclusively answered uh, already. And for this, um, my thanks to our experts from Germany and uh, to you for the very good uh, questions. Um, before we leave, I would like you all um, to stay for a moment and if you can open up your cameras so that uh, my colleague um, Susanda can take a quick um, photo of all of us that we are here. Would that be all right? Thank you. Perfect, I see more faces, almost beautiful as ever. Uh, yes, this looks good. So nice of you all to join us and to be, uh, be with us today. And Susanda, um, can you take the photo? Yes, yes, of course. So um, everyone already turned on your camera. Please put your smile on your face. So um, we will start it right now. One, two, three. One more. So one, two, three. Thank you so much. Okay. We will let her on post it on uh, our Facebook page. Thank you all so much for being here and um, I hope this answered a, a lot of your questions but I can imagine that it probably did not answer all of your questions. In that case we at least from CAS Cambodia are always there so by all means reach out to us if you want to uh, learn more about our internships, about our scholarships, how to go to Germany, how to stay in Cambodia and everything you might want uh, to do with us. Uh, we are always happy uh, to answer back and hopefully welcome you into one of our programs in the next uh, time. As some of my colleagues have already mentioned, please follow us on social media and on our website. I'm aware that a lot of you are already doing that. We've just uh, dropped uh, the links to social media uh, again into the chat. So um, please uh, don't hesitate to join us if you haven't already. And with that, I would say uh, thank you to all of you and have a great start into the week and a great rest of the day in Germany and hope to see you all soon again. Thank you.